Welcome. Welcome to Woodland Baptist Church and to our services today. We believe the most important thing is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We hope that's on your radar, that that matters to you as well. And wherever you are in your spiritual journey, needing Christ, or you're beginning to follow and walk with Christ, or you've been doing that for years, we pray and hope this service will be another step, a help for you in your growth and your walk with the Lord. We're excited at Woodland Baptist Church as we think about ministries and this school year has begun and we're continuing to pray uh, for all those involved with our school system, our teachers, our students, faculty, staff, all those that are taking on loads and uh, this task of caring for our kids and beginning the, the school year. We're also looking to begin ministry here with our Awana program. Please notice all the announcements, but please notice that one in specific, specifically when it comes to list of needs that we're needing for our children. Uh, we just need to provide for each one individually and put it all in a, in a bag for them. And so please notice that list and pens and pencils, crayons, and note, the small notebooks. And so if you can give and donate to that, please know if you're local and you want to be a part of that, that would be a great help for us. If you want to give a donation, that can also be done. So just please notice uh, that part of the announcements and the other things that are taking place uh, in our church at this time. Day to pray. We're coming to our initial deadline today as we focus upon that, as we worship together. You see the board behind me. We celebrate today as 37 people are involved uh, being a part of that. That's families, that's couples, that's individuals taking a slot that are going to pray 30 minutes to an hour uh, for God's will, God's purpose, God's plan when it comes for us as a church. And so we're looking forward to next week and the training uh, that will be involved, one session to, to attend. And so uh, really looking forward by the end of this month, into September, that prayer ministry will, will be going and we look forward to what God is going to do uh, in speaking to us, directing us, and guiding us uh, sufficiently. As we look at our scripture today, and again, focusing on prayer, uniting together in prayer, let's just begin as we begin this service in prayer. But if you want to share with me and say with you by yourself or with your family, let's say the Lord's Prayer together, and then I'll lead us into a time of prayer after that. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Our Father, we thank you. Your holy, righteous love, your good. And we thank you for guiding us modeling for us, giving us a template to go by when it comes to prayer. We want to learn that well and not just memorize it, but apply it that it truly becomes who we are in our relationship with you. Thank you so much for your faithfulness to us and to our community during these days. Continue to give peace and rest and health uh, to all those involved. We thank you for our schools and continue to give your protection and guidance and wisdom uh, to all those involved as well. Thank you that you'll keep parents and teachers and faculty and students all working, focusing together with a sense of peace and harmony and love. Father, we thank you that you're bringing us together to come to pray. And we thank you for these that have taken the step to say yes and those that are considering it and will take that step even today. So Father, we thank you that you're working in such a way that we do see your hand. We appreciate so much your love for us that desires this relationship. And we thank you that prayer, this meaningful part in it, uh, you're helping us to more understand it and not just say prayers, but Father, have a praying life, a relationship of prayer with you. So Father, again, speak to us. We thank you for the songs that we'll sing. We thank you for the scripture that you will speak over us and for your spirit that will orchestrate something wonderful and powerful in leading us to say yes to whatever that yes needs to be. You'll help us to identify it. You'll help us to give us the strength to, to move in a way that will, again, respond to benefit us individually, but also those around us in our family, church, workplace, in the community and world. 
So, Father, we thank you for what you have in store, what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.
from my mother's womb you have chosen Born again into your family, your blood flows through my veins, and I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave. Turn.
give us what we need there has never been out of one of your children a wasted prayer Father you draw near every time we seek you Lord so let's not be lost that it's a privilege God just to have you here and to know that you'll respond God in our best interest because we like to think that we know best we like to think we have a pretty good grasp on things I do a lot of times and Father we don't Father you know all things from before eternity began Father the world's full of books and libraries and means of things that I don't know but God you created a universe that's infinitely full of things that we as a people do not know Father it's full of things that we can't even see and God, a lot of things that we can see, we can't even explain because there's so much greater than you and it's just your creation. So God, I'm so grateful that you hear my prayer. And I'm so grateful, God, when you say no. And Father, in those times when I don't understand, when we can't understand what's best, based on our experience, God, we try to judge what you do as good or bad, as maybe that you're not listening God but you are always listening give us faith to understand your ways Father, when we don't understand your way let you being God be good enough because it's infinitely more than we deserve Father I thank you for that and I thank you in the name of Jesus Wow, what a wonderful moment of worship already we've experienced together in song. Thank you for joining uh, together where you are and celebrating the Lord and adoring Him and praising Him. Again, we 
deeply appreciate our praise team, our sound and audio people who just really go beyond as well to serve us in these ways to help us lift up praises together to the Lord. So we celebrate and give thanks to him today. We're in the book of Ephesians this morning, Ephesians chapter 3. We'll be reading the concluding verses uh, of that chapter, which will end the first half of this letter from Paul. Paul is in prison, and he's writing this letter. It's also believed he's not just writing one particular church, but he's writing a group of churches, that this is what is called a circular letter, that one church would receive it, uh, they would take the time to read it, maybe even a couple of times, but it would move on to another, another church. And so it's interesting, the words that are shared here uh, were more, most likely shared with multiple congregations, house churches, or whatever the situations were. So uh, this letter is, has scripture, be, I mean, excuse me, has prayer at the beginning and at the middle and at the end. And so we're looking at that one of these middle prayers that Paul gives in Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. Let me read it for us as you follow along in your scripture. And we'll share together and have prayer. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to Him. Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Father, may this beautiful prayer Speak to us today. May the intricacy of its words, though maybe sometimes hard to separate and what exactly is Paul praying, be simplified for us, giving us direction and help that even 2,000 years after it was written, that the Spirit of God will take it and begin to move our lives together as we embark on an invitation you've given to us to pray, to pray in a united way, to pray regarding your work here in us, through us, and among us. We thank you how, again, this moment in Scripture will be an investment into our heart, into our minds, of how we approach and move forward together. As we think about praying for the church. What would be some things that we need to make sure we include? We thank you that this prayer is one place where we see an answer to that question. So again, move among us. Speak to us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. was a little deflated this week to find out in researching a little bit that Winston Churchill's a uh, famous speech that he gave at a graduation seems to have been tweaked uh, through history and through time. That they never give up, never give up, never, never give up, and then he goes to sit down. Graduation speech really didn't happen that way, it seems. That first the phrase never give up is really never give in, and he does repeat it. That the speech is a little bit longer, it's not very long, but what he shared at the Harrow School was given with a little bit longer intent, a little bit more to that than what, again, maybe history has shared with us and that I thought was accurate but seems to be needing to adjust. But moving through that speech that Winston Churchill gave in, the, in October of 1941 to the school, 
we see some things that he begins, he moves toward the conclusion of that really shapes for us, I believe, what Paul and the prayer that we just read, and he's trying to share to these churches, works together and we see a common thread between them. First, Winston Churchill addressed that there was a song, I guess a theme song, a song of the school that had the phrase, Darker Days. He recommended with the schoolmaster's permission to, to change that from darker to sterner days. And then he concludes the speech with these thoughts. Do not let us speak of darker days. Let us speak rather of sterner days. These are not dark days. These are great days. The greatest days our country has ever lived. And we must all thank God that we have been allowed each of us according to our stations to play a part in making these days memorable in the history of our race. During the midst of war, here is Winston Churchill sharing that these are not dark but great days. Yes, they're not easy days, but these are days of formation. These are days that we still thank God for. In many ways, Winston Churchill is addressing these students with encouragement to not to lose heart, not get weary, not get bogged down. That these are the days to take a stand. These are the days to see, still see as something that good can happen and bring forth a wonderful result. That's what Paul is intending in what we read in Ephesians chapter 3, 14 through 21. In verse, four, thir in verse 13, right before he says he doesn't want them to lose heart because of his imprisonment where he is writing this letter from. That he is the least of the apostles, of the saints, that he has been given a great opportunity of stewardship, of giving the grace of God, the salvation message of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, that they are included. They are the Gentiles that Paul has helped share with and has helped to understand that belief in Christ is where they need to go and what they need to do. Not to lose heart. So as we think of Churchill's speech, great days, we think of Paul's letter in this paragraph that we too see great days. Yes, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of so much turmoil and struggle, that maybe these are not dark days, but maybe it just takes a stern faith, a thankful, upbeat spirit. And maybe this prayer, as we think about prayer ministry, and as a church, what are we to pray for? And who we are in our relationship to God. Well, I think we see these three thoughts of this prayer that begins to surface for us. We see two dimensions, what I'll call vertical and horizontal. There's three phases and thoughts and requests that are given in this prayer. And then ultimately one purpose, one goal that as we, as Paul is praying for the churches that it is about Christ, that He is the one who is significant. He is the one who will receive glory. First of all, these two dimensions of when praying for the church. If you've signed up for the Day to Pray ministry or you're going to sign up today and be a part of our training, these two thoughts, these two dimensions of how we want to proceed, first of all, is that we pray in the vertical. That we pray, understand that everything comes from God. Everything begins with Him. He is the source of our prayer. That we need to pray vertically. That he begins, he starts, he starts and begins committing to us what we need to know. But not only do we pray vertical, but we pray horizontal. And again, we see this in Paul's prayer. That he uses the phrases whole family. That he concludes the prayer referring to the church and this letter going to multiple churches. So the group... Not just isolated, but the group working together. 
and we see that when he mentions you and the pronoun your, that he's referring to the plural, that there's more than one involved in this prayer. And that we need to see that all of this is working together, that we are united together as one, that we pray with others in mind. And Paul just really connects to us as we think about Jesus teaching us to pray and modeling for us to pray whenever he uses the words, Our Father, and how he prays for the kingdom and the name and for glory and all these things that the maximum, the ultimate, that he is going to be the beginning point for us to experience all that he wants and all that he desires for us. Yes, these two dimensions of praying for the church that both work together, both need to be included, included that I realize Christ and from God, He is the one that we look to, to give and to share towards us and to answer these prayers. At the same time, I'm not just praying for me and my purpose, but I'm praying with you too, that it's ours, that we are collected, that we are working together in this process. Yes, Jesus taught us to pray, and Paul is working to, to pray our Father, to look for the ultimate, to pray for the maximum, because if it's God and it's coming from Him, well, it's going to be the best, and it's going to be abundant. Next, we see in this prayer three steps or three phases of what praying for the church needs to include. Paul included, and again, an example for us. First of all, that we begin this prayer in our praying together, when we pray in our time of prayer, in this day to prayer ministry, that we're going to pray with the identity that we have in Christ. That's how Paul begins. I bow my knees to the Father for, to our, of our Lord Jesus Christ. That we have His name. Paul, excuse me, yeah, Paul talks about our inheritance in Christ, that we are part of this family. That we are united together. And that if we have His name, we belong to Him. We are united with Him, that He has brought us in. As Paul would also say that He's adopted us, brought us into who He wants us to be as in His family. That is where our praying begins. It doesn't begin with our need, though we may have many. It doesn't begin because we earn it or have deserved it. No. We begin in prayer and praying for the church because of our common family inheritance of whose we are in God through Christ. That is our foundation. That is our name that we go before Him in prayer, in Christ, in what He has done, the grace that He has extended. That is where our prayer begins. But we continue in prayer. And Paul's words are tremendous, but maybe a little, can be sometimes confusing how he shares them, like he's wanting to say so much. But we continue in prayer as this need for strength, inner strength is needed for us as we move together as a church to know His purpose and to know His plan. That it's not going to be for the feeble. It's not going to be for the weak, but strength, inner strength that only He can give. That we are empowered by what He grants to us in that grace through His Spirit. That we rely not just when we need it, but because we need Him all the time and in this relationship. And so there's a reliance. There's a heavy dependence that Christ needs to come through, that it is His life in us that must dominate, that must fully dwell, that must have its home in us. That we continue because He continues in us. Because He stays and remains. That's where our source of strength is found. We know physical strength. We gain muscle physically because we have resistance. And we repeat that resistance over and over with weights and running or whatever it is. And so we build up stamina. We build up 
muscle so that we can physically lift and be stronger physically in, in our lives. Well, spiritually, we need some muscle. That there's going to be some times that we're going to need to flex, as it were, for our Lord. And, it, and we're going to need that muscle because what He's going to ask of us, we're not going to be able to do. It's going to be bigger than ourselves. We're going to need this inner strength and this spiritual muscle because temptation may be allowed to come. He may give permission. And so inner strength that He will give us, Christ dwelling within us by His Spirit, we can remove the temptation and see the test. We can say no to the evil one and say yes to God that we're going to grow and we're going to use these moments to see where we are and continue to develop our life in Him. Yes, we will need spiritual strength. We will need what only He can provide for us if we're going to do well together as a church to do His purpose and to do His plan We'll never get it on our strength. We'll never get there just based upon our resources. Our talent is nice, but again, that will be completely insufficient to do God's plan and God's will. So Paul is on target for us. He's really helping us. So when we pray for Awana, and we pray for youth ministry, and we're praying for Celebrate Recovery, and for our praise team, we're praying for inner strength, for Christ to fully dwell in them, that He needs to come through as they plan and organize and share Scripture and begin to present what God has led them to, that inner strength, along with the other things, work together to communicate the full package, the true meaning of what God would want to convey. We must continue in prayer with this request for people, leadership, events in ministry. But number three, we see the prayer reaches a culmination. The prayer reaches a great peak uh, crescendo uh, as Paul moves through the prayer that begins with our family name. We're going to belong, so we're going to start praying. We continue in prayers. We rely upon his strength to see him accomplish through us only what he can do. But this indescribable love, is this crescendo, is this culmination in Paul's prayer that he gives us. And he talks about it being foundational, being rooted and grounded. This love, this name for love that came because of Christ and Christian love. A new word, the word agape, that was the word that would best describe a love that's unconditional. A love that will be faithful and loyal no matter what may come, that the will is heavily involved to obey, that it's not just a feeling, though it may have feelings, but it's much more than that that comes through our life. And so that the full dimension comes through our life. And again, love is a bedrock thought throughout the Scripture. Deuteronomy 6 talks about here, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, and you will do what? You will love the Lord your God with all your heart. Jesus, moving fast forward, comes to that, being asked the greatest commandment. He pulls that out and said, well, the greatest commandment is to love God and to love Him with all you got, with all that you are. And then you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love, again, is woven heavily throughout God's heart and throughout the Scripture. Paul himself, writing to the Corinthians, faith, hope, love. That's a great trilogy, but let's understand that the greatest of the, those three is love. Yes, love, indescribable love. And yet it's like Paul is seeking to understand it. He says we need to comprehend it. We want to understand it. He shares there this height and depth and breadth and width of it. And yet at the same time, the very next verse, it's not, he says, it's, but we'll never get there. I know in the song that we sing that has that chorus about uh, we don't know what it will take to uh, for Christ on the cross and what He did for us. There's no way that we'll fully understand all that. And I think that's true. That we'll never fully grasp and understand the, the cost that it was for what Jesus did for us upon the cross. Well, just because I can't fully understand it doesn't mean that I can't grow in my understanding of it. 
that I just accept a small understanding, just a little bit of knowledge, that I maybe can still enhance that, that there's some questions I can ask, there's some scripture I can read, and though I may not fully comprehend all that Jesus did for me on the cross and the cost that was involved, maybe still I can develop there. And I think that's what Paul here is saying about love. Though we will never reach the ultimate achievement of it and never fully get it all, Paul is saying, I'm still going to make the trip. When it comes to measuring it, when it's trying to come to get to that understanding, I'm going to move forward as best I can, as diligently and faithful as I have opportunity, because when it comes to the love of God, I want to understand as much as I can. I just don't want a little bit of understanding. There's just so much there. And though I'll never get it all, I want to know more than what I have. Wow. As we pray for each other, let's pray for this indescribable love. That you and I will journey together based upon the love that we know now, but with God's help that the increase will come. No, all of it will never happen. But let's all say that we want to go and grow and together pray and watch God bring love in and through our hearts as never before that we would be amazed of how we will accept and help, that we'll be quiet instead of having that immediate negative response, that we'll be more willing to, to forgive than bow up, that we'll let go and be quiet instead of having to defend or whatever our immediate answers are, that maybe the love of Christ will make some inroads, move into the nooks and crannies of our heart into our life that we will see improvement when it comes to expressing the love of Christ in who we are. Let's pray that way when it comes to us as a church. These thoughts, these steps, these phases really come together when we realize that what Paul is saying and what we are moving toward with, with this dated pray ministry is that this is spiritual praying. We have times that we want to be faithful to pray for people physically. There are things going on that we need to remember medically in people's lives and all that that's taking place. And we want to be faithful and we will be remain faithful to do that. But Day to Pray ministry is really not as focused upon those needs and requests as much as saying, God, our need, our request is of a spiritual nature. It's along these lines that through who we are in you and our strength that only comes from you, And this love that we want to improve in and grow in together that we're going to pray and ask you for. It is the spiritual aspects, the spiritual fruit that we want to be about when it comes to day to pray ministry that's going to be expressed in who we become as we live our life together, moving through our ministries, hearing God for future steps of growth and expansion and vision and mention and mission, that we will together unite and see God work and accomplish as spiritual praying comes alongside praying for physical needs and and medical concerns, that together they'll harmonize more and more to see God accomplish in and through us. Yes, let's be about spiritual praying. And then we see this one purpose. Paul brings it down to a close. This one purpose that he prayed for these churches that were located in this region called Ephesus is how we too want to come together to pray that we want to see Christ glorified. We see verse 20 begin, Now to to Him who is able. Verse 21, To Him be glory. These phrases begin to help us to understand that this is all based upon Christ. It begins with His name, It ends with Him being the result. That what He can do, we want Him to accomplish. That the ultimate goal is from our generation and on generations, that forever until that final amen, that Christ is being enlarged. Christ is growing and being known and being understood, being responded to for salvation, being responded to for calling of mission and ministry, that each generation... 
as we seek to be faithful right now in this one, that the ultimate goal, that it will be Christ. Christ forever. Jesus alone. That He is the one that's going to be honored and to be praised. Yes, the purpose of day to pray ministry, it's not our goals that matter. It's not any earthly success that comes from it that we want to make large. Yes, we want to see a good response, but we want to see those that response reflect in serious and significant praying. And if that would be just a few, we're thankful for that. But again, we will be measuring is Christ being exalted? Is His name enlarging when it comes to who we are becoming, how our community is responding, who is moving forward into the world as God gives us opportunity to join Him, that our faith will be stretched, our pocketbook will be His, and we will see again His glory come to us in this time for us and for those who are coming behind us. In 1727, located in the middle Europe, there was a group of believers called the Moravians. The Moravians began kind of as a community that was founded by Count Zizendorf, a government official, a believer though, and he kind of stepped aside from those responsibilities, but he was wealthy and all these things and so he opened up property and his resources and this group of Moravians came and there they started a church. The first few years were kind of not going well. They were more known for bickering and things that were not productive for who they were. But Zizendorf and a small group of others began to seek the Lord. They began to pray and they began to understand God's heart more, and that began to work through the congregation. And then there was this tremendous breakout of revival and spiritual awakening. All the things they had been about were completely at 180 degrees changed. And it was through that summer, as they began to unite, the community began to respond, that they began... In 1727, on August the 27th, 1727, they began a prayer ministry that lasted for 100 years. 24 men and 24 women said, I would take an hour to pray. And it was passed on, and after 65 years of that 100 over 300 missionaries came from that Moravian group, from that Moravian church, and began to move out, spreading the gospel, sharing Christ, starting new churches. God used the catalyst of prayer, a church praying together, praying consistently and constantly, just like day to pray, prayer ministry wants to unite us and be coordinated as a catalyst that we too will be thrusted forth, that God himself will be the one that will be setting the pace, guiding us, leading us, and directing our steps for his glory, for his work, being accomplished through our lives together. Yes, the Moravians is a tremendous testimony. I don't know if Day to Pray will be here a century from now, but right now our step is today. And we want together to say we need Him as never before. We need to unite. We need to see, uh, unlock the resources that God has and that we will begin to kneel before Him consistently, one after another, coming to God, offering our heart before Him and praying and trusting Him to lead us well. If you have not yet said yes to the day of prayer ministry, I would encourage you to do so. If you're watching us on Facebook, I want you to see that on our website, wbcspringfield.com. You can go there and get forms. You can sign up online. You can do it all right there. But if you want to contact myself or text me or email me, I will help you get what you need so you can participate as well. This is, can be done at home. You don't have to go anywhere and pray. You're just saying, this will be the day.
that I will unite with my fellow believers and brothers and sisters in Christ at Woodland Baptist Church and I will participate with them. I will go to my 30 minutes to, to an hour and pray. I will receive the monthly prayer guide and take it seriously when my day shows up. And I will move through those requests, move through the church calendar, and I will keep Scripture there, and I will work my, my part in uniting with God, with others, and what God can do and provide His answers. Yes. Let's receive Paul's encouragement. He didn't want the Ephesians to lose heart. If there's any day that we don't need to lose heart, it would be today. How do we do that? Well, let's pray. For this reason, Paul said, I bow my knees and I approach God. And God, because of my relationship to you, I pray that you would fill my brothers and sisters with inner strength. That you would help them to begin as never before your indescribable love. And that to you, the one who is truly able, that you can do above, exceedingly abundantly, above all that we ask, or think, would you come and work it through the church in our generation and in generations to come? Oh, may that be our experience. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for the Moravians who said the Lamb who had come and He's able and we're going to follow Him. That Father, we too, that we will have our banner and we will raise it high that we are yours and that we will join with you in this relationship of prayer. That, Father, we will unite with you and with one another, joining, linking our hearts and our minds together to pray, to pray for what we know you're presently doing, but enlarging our heart to what we don't know but you will begin to reveal and speak to us. Father, I pray for each one that they will say yes to the day to pray prayer ministry. Not because it's the ministry, not because others are, but because you have invited. You have helped them to understand by your spirit that this is what they need to say yes to. To build their life up in you. To do it together as a church body and as a church family. So I thank you in advance for the responses of, of yes, of agreeance with you, that, Father, you want to demonstrate yourself to us. You want us to know your heart and your plan and your mission. And we are beginning to understand we will never know that unless we pray, spiritually pray, and watch and pray. So have your way, Lord, in each and every heart. Speak to us. Lead us to yourself as Savior. Lead us to yourself as head of the church. Lead us to yourself as the one who continually prays for us that we will join you in prayer. It's in your precious name we ask, and it's for your sake. Amen.